I'm overwhelmed. I've been in tears since early this morning and from Wednesday's bike ride all the way up to the day. It's just unbelievable how everybody's come together and just want to do a little something. Coming up, we'll take you to a benefit concert for the family of a fallen officer. And a Madison County couple is in jail, accused of letting their kids live in filth. We're tracking an ongoing murder investigation in Laurel County. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. A man is dead tonight and his cousin in jail. Thanks for staying up late with us. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Deputies in Laurel County arrested 23-year-old Jonathan Humfleet early this morning. They tell us he got into a fight with 31-year-old Clifford Humfleet Jr. at a home on Boardwalk Circle near London. Sam Smith spoke with deputies about what may have led to the fight in our top story. This home is the scene of a murder investigation. Upon arrival at the scene, they found a victim that had been shot once in the chest. Neighbors were alarmed to see sheriff's deputies out here on Broadway Circle early Sunday morning. Investigators are trying to figure out what happened inside this living room. What, what our detective uh, believes happened was that there was an argument uh, that took place there at that residence and, and a fight took place afterwards uh, and a gun was produced during the fight and one person was shot. Now the investigation into what led up to the fight is still ongoing. Deputies say alcohol may have played a role. Jonathan Humphleet is charged with attempted murder for allegedly shooting his cousin Clifford Humphleet Jr. who later died at UK Hospital. Another family member, River Humphleet, is accused of providing Jonathan Humphleet with the gun. River Humphleet is charged with felicitation to commit murder. More charges are possible. Our charges are going to stand as is because we're going to make a presentation to the uh, next term of the Lark County Grand Jury uh, um, with the anticipation of a, a murder charge. That presentation can happen next month. In Laurel County, Sam Smith, WKYT. Deputies say no one else was home at the time of the shooting. Two parents are in jail tonight. State police in Madison County say their two children were living beside garbage, clutter, and roaches. Police arrested parents Brandon Newcomb and Kay Bullen yesterday after a welfare check. The arrest citation states troopers found piles of trash and pests throughout the home. They say the living conditions put a two year old and a six year old living there at risk. Both Newcomb and Bullen are charged with endangering the welfare of a minor. An inmate on death row for a murder committed in Lexington has died. State prison leaders tell us 62 year old Thomas Bowling died from complications with cancer. Bowling was convicted of killing James and Tina Early outside their Lexington dry cleaning business in 1990. He was sentenced to death in 1991 and was scheduled for execution in 2004, but a judge delayed the date after Bowling and another inmate sued, saying lethal injection was unconstitutional. They want to help the family of a fallen officer. Today, half a dozen bands played in Nicholasville to raise funds for Officer Burke Rhodes' wife and children. Rhodes died earlier this month in a car crash in Garrett County. Jordan Valines went to the benefit honoring the Nicholasville officer. Little music brings people out. And on Sunday, the crowd has been amazing. A whole lot of people packed in to Mama's Last Chance Saloon in Nicholasville. It is amazing. How people who don't even know him came out and have supported. Because even those who didn't know Officer Burke Rhodes certainly knew of him. This is just something little that we can pay back to his family. My biggest thing is I want his children to know how important he was to the world and how important he was to his community. The number of people at the benefit concert in honor of Officer Rhodes was a true testament to just how many lives he touched. I'm overwhelmed. I've been in tears since early this morning and from Wednesday's bike ride all the way up to the day. It's just unbelievable how everybody's come together and just want to do a little something. Little by little, the money raised for Officer Rhodes Memorial Fund quickly added up to a lot. The donations totaling several thousand dollars by the end of the evening. Every different person you could think of all in one place unified to do the same thing. That's when you know where you live is, is a good place. A place. In Nicholasville, Jordan Valines, WKYT. The money raised during today's benefit concert will go to the Officer Rhodes Memorial Fund. Weather-wise, our work week is full of changes. Expect rain chances and colder temperatures to creep into the forecast. Mike Linden is tracking those developments.
That's right, Kristen. Right now, we're watching a cold front that lies right along the Tennessee Kentucky line. And it's that cold front that, once it continues to push farther away from us, will leave us wide open to cooler air moving in from the north. Right now, live first alert defender, you can see some of those showers along the Tennessee line, but nothing that's really impacting the bluegrass state. We take a bit of a wider look out, and that's where we're seeing right now the cloud cover that is still hanging over Kentucky. That cloud cover, once it continues to pull back, is going to open us up to that cooler air working its way back to the surface, sinking into the lower elevations and causing temperatures to fall that much more. You can see that the clouds beginning to peel away. They're right over, right over Indiana. And looking to the to that cold front again, pushing away from us, but to the northwest. Once again, looking at yet another storm set to impact Kentucky as we move into the middle of the work week. But what's key here are the temperatures, which right now you can see are dropping, falling back into the mid to low 40s. And this is a good 10 or so degrees cooler than where we were yesterday. And we still have more to go. I'll show you exactly what we are tracking overnight and into the work week that could include temperatures in the 70s. Kristen? Mike, some families had to evacuate their homes tonight after someone drove into the side of a building. Police say around 9.30, someone driving a blue pickup truck hit a gas meter at an apartment building on Oxford Circle. We're told about 15 to 20 people had to evacuate temporarily. Even though an agreement wasn't reached last week in Frankfurt on the heroin bill, we are told discussions were productive. The state house and senate have been trying all this session to reach a compromise on a heroin bill. The chambers each have their own versions but can't agree on some points. They're still trying to work out how the police should treat addicts, how dealers should be punished, and who would fund the bill. There's about three or four of us been through this budgeting process quite a bit, and you tend to see that you come back and, well, we've got too much here. We've got lapsed money not being used. Uh, I think we all have to take a realistic look. Where are these monies coming from? The 2015 legislative session is scheduled to end Tuesday. City leaders in Lexington are taking some extra precautions as we enter the final rounds of the NCAA tournament. A notice will soon go into effect for several streets near UK's campus, and it will impact folks' outdoor furniture. The city is declaring about a dozen off campus UK housing areas emergency areas, and security in those areas will increase. They're going to be patrolling rather than just, uh, you know, typically they wait for calls. But in this case, they're being proactive and they're patrolling and looking for problems. The notice goes into effect this Thursday at 9 a.m. and it runs until 9 the morning after the championship game. The KHSAA Boys Sweet 16 wrapped up this afternoon inside Rupp Arena. Owensboro High School defeated Bowling Green in the championship game. Some ticket sellers and vendors told us this year's final wasn't as well attended as expected. It'd be swarming. It would be packed in the hallways. The store, every store would be booming right now. But like I said, you look around right now, it's really, really slow. Owensboro beat Bowling Green 74 to 58. The all time record high for attendance was set back in 1987, with just more than 21,000 fans. This week marks National Work Zone Safety Week. And while staying alert in work zones is a priority year round, state highway crews say it is particularly important throughout spring and summer. Transportation cabinet leaders talk with us about why it's important for drivers to pay attention. State highway department crews are putting plans in place to fix weather damaged roads. We have maintenance work zones and construction work zones that will be popping up all over the place. Highway crews say their busy season begins with the start of spring. We've had embankment failures. We've had um, mudslides, uh, rock falls. Uh, the freeze thaw cycle hasn't been kind to us this year. Crews want to remind drivers about the consequences of not obeying road signs in a work zone. Quit using your cell phone. You need to not tailgate. You need to pay close attention to the signs or the flaggers if there are people using um, flagging to control the traffic. Motors tend to still stay at current speeds uh, to get to their destination and with those particular areas they're, they're meant for the traffic to uh, decelerate, slow down, move over for the workers. Construction season starts April 1st and lasts throughout the summer.
ISIS has released what appears to be a hit list on dozens of members of the U.S. military. The online post includes addresses and pictures and urges followers to kill those listed. The group says it's posting the information, quote, so that our brothers in America can deal with you and because the military members were part of campaigns to defeat ISIS. Well, I think this is exactly the kind of tactics that we are starting to see uh, increase, not only here but in other parts of the world where uh, these Islamic extremist terrorist elements are looking to different so-called soft targets. A spokesperson from the U.S. Marine Corps says the NCIS is contacting individuals affected in person. They are recommending Marines and their family members check their online social footprint to make sure privacy settings are adjusted to limit the amount of available personal information. A helicopter crashed into a house in Orlando this afternoon. Police say the chopper hit a guest house right behind a home. No one was inside at the time. Police won't yet say how many people were in the helicopter or if anyone was hurt. The helicopter left from Orlando Executive Airport about two miles away from the crash site. The FAA and NTSB are investigating. A photograph from a 10K race in Kentucky is going viral. The photo shows a woman crossing the finish line hand in hand with her son and a police officer. The two people have kept her going. Casey Cunningham has her story. When you see the photo, just know that you're worth it and you can do anything that you put your mind to. Two years in and 217 pounds lighter, Asia Ford is on a journey to be strong and healthy for her three children. I just knew that all of those times we went to the doctor's office and the doctor told us what could have happened, I wasn't going to let that happen to me. So stopping during the Road City run, not an option. But mile after mile, step after step, getting unbearable. My breath was kind of like, it felt like it was taken from me. You know, the EMS guys got out, talked to her, went to check on her, and she's like, I'm not stopping, I'm not stopping. So she kept going. And he said, you're going to finish the race, aren't you? I was like, yes. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going to let her stop. We're going to do this together. I got out, and uh, she grabbed my hand, I grabbed her hand. So step by step soon became the last mile. And then Asia, her son, and Lieutenant Gregory crossed the finish line hand in hand. And watching her go across that line, raising her hands, it, I felt that all over. You know, it was a great moment. For him, I knew that that was my angel at the time because that mile five was where I was going to give up. Asia's son Terrence held her other hand. He'll tell you he has a new hero. Looking at her and how she used to be and how, how she is now is inspirational and it makes me want to push harder to do the things that I want to do in life. And a new perspective on those in blue. With all the stuff that's going on now with police and it's, it's nice to have to know that there's good people out there. The very reason Lieutenant Gregory wears his badge every day. That is what being a police officer is about. You know, a service to others, um, helping. And his helping hand to Asia became her inspiration to continue. I just, I'm thankful to you because you are my angel. You're that, that person that I could have stopped. That could have been the end of my race, but you didn't allow it. So I praise you and I thank you and you're my inspiration.